What's up, everyone? Welcome to Intergalactic Expedition. I'm your host, Vazrik. This week's guest, former Tachi Palace and WSOF champ, current Bellator featherweight, Georgie Karakanian. What's up, Georgie? How you doing, brother? Thanks for coming by, man. Thank you for having me, man. So you're, you're fighting our last guest, Bubba. Yeah, yeah, I'm Bubba I'm, Jenkins. I'm getting, uh, well, he's getting a rematch. Yeah. Um, against me, and it's, it's going to be a good fight at the uh, Honda Center, August 26th. So uh, you submitted him in the first round last time? Yeah, it was, um, last time we fought was about a year ago, a year and a half ago. Yeah. And um, the fight wasn't that fast. I mean, it wasn't that long. It was pretty quick. I yeah. was expecting it to be all three rounds, but uh, it went really quick. And, uh, you know, he gets his rematch for now. How they decide on this, like Scott Coker and Bellator, how they decide that, okay, he deserves a rematch? I didn't personally ask for that fight. Uh, they were trying to make it happen because they said it makes more sense because we're in Southern Cali. We're coming to the Honda Center. And... Um, they were pushing for that fight. I was asking for different fighters, but they were pushing for that fight. And me, it's just, it doesn't matter to me who I fight. It's just as long as I have an opponent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Who is, uh, who is the next guy that you want to fight after Bubba? Anyone or who would you want to fight before Bubba, actually? Was there anyone you had on in your mind? But yeah, it was uh, Josh Thompson, the 55-pounder. That's a nice uh, fight. It was, uh, they signed f- a kid from UFC, Noah Lahad. Okay. I was asking for them to give me, give me him, let me, let me find him. But, um, you know, maybe after this fight. Yeah, you're going to contact him on social media and try to instigate him a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you know, that's what all the fighters are doing now, again on Twitter and just calling out fighters. So maybe I'll do that. Seriously, right? Like, these guys are making fights by just arguing on there. Right. There's, I don't know what's the point of having a matchmaker if they're just going to go on Twitter and talk shit. And- what about rankings? What about uh, all of that is out, man? Yeah, it goes out the window and this I guess the social media has so much power. You know, you, it shows it right there that people, fighters could call out another fighter and just could make it happen. So you don't you think you should maybe call out Conor McGregor then? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he's in your weight division, bro. <laughs> Fuck Conor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He's in UFC. He's doing his thing. He's gonna get his ass whooped again by Nate Diaz. So You think so? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Why is that? You think because of the the his because of the last fight, I think uh, he believed in his hype too much, and uh, which is not a bad thing. But I think Nate Diaz has a lot of experience, especially going up a weight class at one seventy. You know, Nate has been doing this for such a long time. His jujitsu is in a different level. Someone's saying he weighs like two hundred pounds for this fight. Like he's going to cut to one seventy from two hundred. Connor, and oh, Nate. Nate, yeah, I believe that. That's no, huge. I, that, that's big. Yeah. I mean, last time they fought, Nate was partying two weeks before the fight in Cabo. He was taking shots <laughs> of tequila, so we'll see this time. So he messed them up with no training, and he's drinking. Yeah. And so this time, he's gotten huge. Now he's going to have a full camp. He's going to kill him. Yeah. So uh, all your fights, all your fights from WSOF, King of the Cage, Bama... Um, what else organizations? Have Dream you? in Japan. Dream. What's one of the most interesting experiences you've had in MMA? The most interesting experience was in Japan. You know, fighting in Saitama Arena in front of 37,000 people. Uh, That's the, the Pride Stadium, yeah, right? Yeah, the Pride Stadium. You know, just walking out and they just they lift you up. And it's, it was a crazy feeling, especially when the fight started. The whole crowd just went silent. I've heard that. Why is that? They're just so educated fans. It's just so, like, if you do something crazy, they just start going crazy. But, but grappling then, you're talking about? Grappling and uh, on the feet. Wow. So it was, it was a cool experience for me finding their um, uh, champion, Takaya, Hiroyuki Takaya. They didn't give me the belt, but, you know, I, I walked out of there with the victory, and then it was fun. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Good, so good that's good one of your best experience yeah just you know interacting with the fans they were very educated they, they treated you like a lot of fans knew about me and it, which was crazy you know going out to japan and i'm pretty sure they're flying me out there to lose 
because <laughs> when I when I land there in the airport, I told them I'm fighting Takaya. They're laughing at me. They're like, "Oh, you're gonna lose." So you know, to me, it doesn't bother me. How'd you much. finish that guy? I went to decision. Okay. I beat him all three rounds. Decision, you know. So, so um, you were born in Russia, right? I was born in Russia, Moscow, but you know, both my parents are Armenians. Have you ever fought in Russia or or uh, some Eastern European country or anything? No, no, you know that's that's not a not a goal. Hopefully, Bellator go to Russia or uh, anywhere, Armenia, anywhere. I'm down to fight out there, man. Yeah, yeah. So if B- Bellator has an event in Russia, you're there. I'm there. They yeah, better, it's got a quicker better put me on that card. <laughs> What do you think about Fedor and his uh, last fight against uh, Maldonado? Maldonado. Yeah, that was. Um, I thought he lost. You think but, so? Yeah, yeah. I thought he lost, and uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Fedor, but uh, you know, I think they overturned that fight to draw, right? I'm not sure. I, I, I'm I know not sure. he won, but they, they, I think the, I think someone got the fired. The MMA Federation turned out to a draw or something like that. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. Majority. I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah. That was that was crazy. So. You, while I was watching that fight, it looked, it looked like it was the guy was just allowing Fedor to take excessive amounts of hits. And he Fedor was, got dropped too, right? He got dazed. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was so messed up, man. He was so messed up, and but they just let it go a little bit longer. Yeah, than, yeah. than usual, than more than usual, actually. That I was think excessive. they should because the fight is in Russia. <laughs> it's the Fedor, so. <laughs> They're going to go for him, I'm pretty sure. What, what would you think would happen to if they, the ref would stop that fight, man? Think about it. Like, if all the fans are there, there's, let's say there's uh, 20,000 fans there to watch Fedor, and the ref stops it. I don't think Maldonado would made out of Russia. <laughs> and uh, someone, someone said that Maldonado actually was, like, trying to sue the Federation over there for... Losing the fight, or yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he got he lost the decision, and he's like, "How did I lose?" He's like, "The most this could have been was a draw." Yeah, yeah, I c- I could understand him. You know, I agree with him. So he was uh, trying to sue, and some guy was saying, uh, "Bro, just just let it go. Just chill, yeah." Just before chill. the Russian mafia yeah. shows up to <laughs> he's like, "You don't know how the system works over yeah. there, bro. The system is not like over here in the United States, man. It's crazy over there. It's crazy." I really love what. Scott Coker was doing in Strike Force, and I'm really happy that Strike Force. Unfortunately, Strike Force closed down, but um, Coker's turning this into completely into the new Strike Force. Mm-hmm. He's uh, putting kickboxing matches the same night. He's doing something that you know you you haven't seen anywhere, and that's the one thing about Scott Coker. He's a uh, he, he understands his sports, and he understands the fighters. You know, I talked to him personally, and um, he, he's a good person, and he's going to take Bellator to a different level. He's already taking Bellator to a different oh, level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What did you think of Bellator before the Bjorn, Bjorn Rebney time? Uh, Bjorn never – I fought there when Bjorn was there. Yeah. He, he was cool with me, but uh, I heard some stories about Bjorn, man. Can we so, hear it, or these are personal stories uh, about him? I heard uh, he killed someone's dog. So for, <laughs> he, he actually, oh, I think he, he, he disliked this person. So he, <laughs> he went to his house, and he fucking killed the dog. But then after when they, they found out it was him, he, I think he started donating uh, to the Animal uh, Foundation. So he's doing it for the rest of his life. He has to donate the money. Oh, man. But it's some crazy stories about him. But, uh, <laughs> you know, Bjorn is... I don't know where's Bjorn. I heard he's in Mexico partying. <laughs> <laughs> the, how much do you remember? How much they sold it for, or they purchased it for, for uh, Bellator from him, or no? No, I don't remember. Well, I, don't I remember. wonder what Viacom paid uh, Bjorn to get <laughs> well, out. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> Go back to Mexico. <laughs> Go to Mexico yeah, and so have, some, find have some fun over there. He's <laughs> probably chilling on that yacht over there. And the tournament money was crazy. It was like I think one fifty. If you were in a tournament, you get $150,000. Really? Yeah, yeah. But then slowly. I think the tournament format was just too much. Excessive? You, yeah. It was, you would forget who was the last winner, who was in the semis and this, that. So I think Scott did the right thing, taking off the tournament out of the way and just doing two shows a month or one show a month, which is... You're right, you're right about that. It was becoming... 
a show where you didn't recognize the fighters. Yeah. I was watching it, and I'm like, who are these guys? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> like, I was telling Bubba this. From all those guys from the Bjorn Rebney days, you and Bubba and maybe, like, one or two more guys you remember. But the rest were like, who are they? Yeah. It was just like so a, a new shows. guy would come in, and it was like every Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, every Friday. <laughs> we, it was like every Friday, a different weight tournament. Yeah. And it was just like no-namer after no-namer. It was like um, King of the Cage has bigger, <laughs> was, had bigger names than that. I agree, yeah. They, but, were, they were just doing it too many shows. It was just too much. Yeah, but let, check this out. Like you said, with um, Scott Coker coming in, that fight with uh, Shamrock and Gracie, and you train, mm-hmm. or you know Gracie, right? Yeah, like yeah, he's Gracie. He's, he's a Gracie. buddy of yours. Yeah, yeah, he's... And, uh, and um, the, unfortunately, Kimbo. Kimbo Slice, he passed away, rest in peace, uh, with uh, Dada 5000. That was, don't get me wrong, that was a bad fight, but it has the highest ratings of all time, mm-hmm. that, ter- that event. And it's just the, per- the way they promote it. Like, you can't think of a certain episode of Bjorn Rebney Day's Bellator. Yeah, Bjorn wasn't about promoting, views, yeah. promoting or yeah. getting the views. But I think as a fighter, to be able to understand the organization, what are their goals? Because every organization is going to have their goals to get as many views as they want. Yeah. So Bellator is trying to compete with UFC to get as many views as they can. So... What Scott does, he puts... A, some people talk shit about the matchups. Yeah. But look at the views. Yeah, look yeah, Look at yeah. the views Kimbo got and the, the Kimbo and Dada fight or Hoist and Frank. But uh, at the end of the day, how is Viacom or Bellator going to make money? They have to make money by getting views. And if they get views, they're going to pay us more money. More money. Yeah. So it, it, it's hard to understand, but it, it's... It's very simple. If you want to get paid more, you got to get the views up, and that's simple. So you're okay with having fights like Kimbo's and versus uh, some guy Dada, as long as views are, they get the views, right? As a fighter, when you look at it from outside, you're like, man, I mean, why why can't they use someone young, up and comer, to get the views? But it's gonna be impossible because Kimbo. Has a big name. Huge. Hoist Gracie has a huge name. Uh, Shamrock has a big name. Dada Five Thousand, I don't know, but uh, you know those three that they have a lot of big names, so it gets the views all the way up. So you know, I, I understand their business aspect of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely, I agree. Yeah. I mean, if I was running it, I would do what Coker's doing completely, because like you said, those views are equaling advertisement, mm-hmm. and if you have. Some giant name guy who happens to be 50 years old and he doesn't know how to, or he's about to, he should have retired maybe Mm -hmm. at 40, but he's still fighting. Who am I to say you want to fight? Who who are we to say? If he wants to fight at 55, I can't say, hey, Mr. Gracie, you shouldn't fight at 55, you know? It's his choice. He can still kick a 30, (laughs) he could kick a 30 year old's ass still, you know? But it's um, it's an amazing. Bellator has become this amazing product now, definitely with Scott Coker. And um, and I love the entrance. If they made it WWE oh, that's style. Amazing, yeah. The I love it. I, shows. Yeah, I love I love those uh graphics and stuff when in the background as the fighters coming in and he's got like fireworks and graphics. Yeah, they, it's cool, dude, man. It's amazing. I mean UFC doesn't do that. UFC's got just like the guy who runs out of the Locker room in the back, he comes out, and that's it. But this is, yeah, it costs more, but it's entertaining. It's it's entertainment. Like Bubba said, Bubba was saying this. He's like, it's sports, but it's entertainment. It is entertainment. You know, um, a good friend of mine, King Mo, he, he, uh, we stay in touch a lot, and he tells me, the sport is entertainment. You, when you walk out, you got to do something that people remember you. Yeah. When you win, you got to do something people remember you, so... Yeah, he you comes know, out with, yeah, his oh, yeah, with his little crown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's his that's his shtick, you yep. know, like that's what he does. Like um a caveman rickles, you know. Yeah, he Cave- walks out with the little dinosaurs and Yeah, that's his that's his thing. And and Connor's is his um it's his talk and his, yeah, and Chael Sonnen did that. And 
there's so many, so many more fighters better than Chael Sonnen, but Chael Sonnen is remembered. Um, okay, you ready for uh, Intergalactic Expedition 5 questions time? Let's do it. <laughs> Number one, what is your favorite movie of all time? My favorite movie of all time, I would say, um, hmm, Scarface. Cool. Question number two. Who would you like to play you in the movie about your life? Robert De Niro. <laughs> Good one. Number three. If you were an animal, what would you be? I'd probably be a grizzly bear or a black bear. Cool. Question number four. What was your favorite toy as a kid? My favorite toy as a kid, I think the Armenian listeners would understand, but this is, it's called duduk. You know, it's a little thing. It's a flute? Yeah, it's a flute, yeah. Yeah, it's the Armenian flute. (laughs) (laughs) Question number five. If you could choose one superpower, what would it be and why? Superpower, huh? Yeah. Batman? Batman's powers? Yeah, Batman's powers are the best. So I'll <laughs> stick with that. Cool, man. So um, how can the fans reach Georgie if they want to follow you on social media? Uh, they can reach me on uh, Instagram at GeorgieMMA or on Twitter at GeorgieMMA. And, you know, they hit me up. I'll respond back to them if I'm not training. Yeah. Any promoters or anything you want to thank? Uh, yeah, you know, thank Bell- Bellator for uh, putting me on this great card for August uh, 26th, I'll be at the Honda Center, and I'll be live on Spike TV, and um, thanks to all the supporters, and uh, one of my main sponsors, Original Grappler. That's a cool name. Yeah. <laughs> OG. All right, man. Georgie, thank you, man. Thank, thank you. you for coming by. Really appreciate it, and uh, go handle your business, and you're welcome back anytime, bro. Thank you for having me, my brother. I want to also thank you, our fans, for supporting Intergalactic Expedition. Please subscribe, follow, like, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.